My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is Matthew 27, this is uh, 46. So what was happening there, Jesus Christ was hung on the cross. Those were his last words that he said uh, before he, his soul came out. A lot of people listen to that saying and they say, oh, we really have a fake Jesus. Why was he crying out for trouble? But the truth here is, if we look at this uh, chapter, it was the time when uh, Jesus Christ was crying out for him, having carried, on, carried out our, our, our own sins. He was on that cross for you and for me. So if we truly look into this, he was truly being forsaken by our own sins for us to be forgiven. But I went into this chapter and I saw that uh, these same words were said in Psalms uh, 22 verse 1. When David was in despair and he had lost hope. And he was saying to God, my God. My God, why have you forsaken me? Yes, Jesus, uh, yes, uh, David was in despair. But truly going into that chapter, he still believed in God. He still believed there was a Jesus going to come. Because we see that what he said in Psalms 22, verse 1, is what is happening when Jesus Christ was now on the cross in Matthew 27. So as we see here, as we look at Jesus, he was not crying out to God because he didn't know what was happening. Remember, Jesus was God himself. And him being God, he knew exactly what was happening. He knew the plan for taking people to salvation. So God, Jesus, who was God now, was just crying out, showing everyone that uh, he knew what David was saying in Psalms 22 verse 1. He was just trying to repeat what was, what was said in Psalms 22 verse 1. That is now happening. It was a prophecy being said by David, but now it's being fulfilled through him as Jesus. But, you know, looking at uh, this scripture saying, uh, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I took it uh, to what we do today. The question that we all have is when we are going through trouble, we say, God, why me? Why is all this happening to me? Why have I lost my mom? Why have I lost my dad? Why is it that now I don't have a job? Why is it that now I don't have money? Why is that all bad things are happening to me? Why have you chosen me and not someone else? We always look for trouble to be fall on other people and not on us. So when we go back to Jesus, he knew that he was hung on the cross for everyone else. But when things happen to us, we, turn, we tend to ask, why is it happening to us? Why are these things happening to us? I went into the scriptures that uh, Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians. We all know that uh, Apostle Paul he went around opening churches for people and he opened the church in Corinth. And when he opened that church, he gave them all the rules to follow. He gave, he gave them all the commands. But after doing that, that church, it went worldly. They started ignoring all the commandments that Paul had given them from God. 
they now started going into looking at who is preaching before us. They started comparing all the leaders. Some people were saying, uh, thank you, Paul, you opened this church for us. But after you opening it for us, we want Peter to be preaching to us because he was the one who was a disciple to Jesus Christ. They now wanted Peter because as Jewish leaders now, who were now Christians, they were now feeling, I wanted Peter, who they knew, he knew Jewish culture. And they wanted Peter to come and preach to them and bring back that tradition. They now wanted to ignore all the words from Christ and go according to their tradition. And the other people were saying, oh, Peter, thank you. Yes, God did well for us. He opened the church through you. But we want an eloquent and sophisticated speaker who is Apollos. They wanted somebody who was not Paul. Some people wanted Paul, yes, because he was the founder of the Corinthians church. But we also saw some people wanting Jesus Christ himself because they knew this church was being opened simply because uh, Apostle Paul wanted them to follow the pathway to heaven. He wanted them to go to Jesus Christ. He wanted them to go to heaven. But after Paul had done all this, it was a good thing he had done to everyone else in Corinth. They were now coming back to him, forgetting that he had built this church for them for salvation. They came back to him saying, Oh, Paul, why us? Lord, why us in this trouble? Why me in this trouble? Why do I have this leader instead of Paul? Why do I have why do I have Peter in front of me instead of Apollos? So when God looks at us, he sees that we start crying out for things that, that are not important in heaven. We start crying out for trouble. That is not trouble when God looks at it. So Apostle Paul came in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 9 to 13. And he was telling now the Israelites, I mean, he was now telling the Corinthians that you need to be very careful because God has been very good. He came and he opened the church for you. Exactly what he did with your Jewish fathers when they were moving from uh, Egypt to Canaan. He gave them manna from heaven. He gave them everything that he thought their life will be kept, I mean, they will be kept alive for all the 40 years. But they forgot all that. They started crying out. When Moses left them in the wilderness, when he was going back to God to ask for the pathway for them to go to Canaan, when they were left behind by Moses, they started, I mean, um, praying to cows that they met. They forgot that there was God. They went into idolatry. So Peter was now reminding these Corinthians, you need to be very careful of what you are doing now. Don't go into idolatry. Do not go into forgetting what God did for you. Everything that you are crying out for, God has already sorted everything out. There is no trouble that you can have today. That has not happened before. Everything that, that is coming to you is trouble. You truly have to remember that it has happened even before and God has already given answers through the Israelites. God gave Jesus answers that yes, you are on the cross, but you are doing this, killing everybody's sin so that they come to heaven. So like so Apostle Paul says uh, to the Corinthians, there is nothing to really cry out for because what's happening you, to you today has happened before. So it's 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. Verse 13 says, No temptation is over, 
taken you except what is common to mankind. So everything that is happening to you today, it has happened to mankind before. And this is what he was trying to tell the Corinthians. And this is why also I have come to you because we have this question that that says, uh, Lord, why me? Lord, why me? We are all asking God why we are in certain problems. Yes, you are in those problems. Because God has given you those problems. Because he knows there are ways to overtake those problems. If you are truly in Christ, if you truly believe in him, God. I'll continue reading verse 13. It says, um, and God is faithful. He will, let, he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can enjoy it. So this is what even happened to Jesus Christ. He was hung on the cross. And yes, we all say he passed on, he, he so went, I mean, he so went. But remember, that day he came back. God put him through that knowing he was going to arise, he was going to resurrect. So even if you have problems today, just know that God will give you a way to come out. You will have a way to come out. So as I go to the end, Jesus is not fake. He went onto the cross for you and for me so that we are forgiven. But as we can't cry out to God and put God aside because we're saying God is fake, why am I in this trouble? Because all those problems that we have, they can truly be put aside if we have God in us. They can truly be put aside because everything that we are going through, every problem that we have today has happened before. It has happened before and God is with us. So let's all truly be in God. Let's all worship. That's the only way out. <laughs>